In this video, we're going to be doing some very simple whole home energy monitoring. Make sure you stick around, and if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button below and keep an eye out for more videos. Hi, I'm Will from Will Surrey Tech, and today we're going to be doing some whole home energy monitoring using a Wemos D1 Mini and a CT clamp. So, let's get going. Right, so to do this, we need three things. First thing we need is this. This is a CT clamp. It undoes, you put it around a cable, when you do it up, it can then measure the current. It does that with magnets and physics and cool stuff. We also need a Wemos D1 Mini, a nice little ESP8266 chip, and then we need this. Now this is a an ESP power sensor made by David Mottram, um, and basically it has a, a little jack on the front for your CT clamp, and it has the slots for your D1 Mini to plug into and it's got the resistors and the capacitors and sorts everything else out for you. Very simple, very easy. And once you plug it in, it just works. There are only two quid on eBay, so would highly recommend getting one. Um, and it just keeps everything in a neat solution, neat case. And if you go onto his GitHub, you can find links to his Thingiverse and you can print yourself a little case for your D1 Mini as well. Perfect. Right. So then, we need to set it up. And to set it up, we need ESP Home. We're going to create a new device. We're going to call it Power. Enter your Wi-Fi information here. I'm not going to connect it now. I'll connect it later. It's going to be an ESP8266. And our creation our creation, our thing has been created. So then we can go into our edit and some of this information will already be filled out for you. Um, it won't look quite like this, but I've changed it for secret so you, know, you can't see things. And then we need to have a look at the ESP Home website. And in here you can see there is a sensor, uh, some filters which will calibrate it. And so we're going to use that and we're going to paste that in. But we don't just want that, or well, that isn't enough even. We also need the actual source of the sensor, which is this bit. So we've got, this is kind of measuring current, but this is actually what the, the pin will be reading from your clamp sensor. These values here, or this whole filter thing, we're going to comment out for now, because we can't calibrate it until we've got it running. So that's great, but actually current is kind of useless to us because current doesn't really mean anything. So we also want power. For that, we're going to use this template sensor here. This template sensor is going to have an idea of my power. We're going to call it home power. Uh, it's going to replace, it's going to take the ID of home current, which is what we're going to call this. So we'll actually add that ID in now. and it's going to take the state of that, it's going to multiply it by 230, so that's the voltage we use in the UK, and divide it by 1000. And that just means it's going to output in kilowatts rather than just watts. Uh, I'm also going to change this update interval to five seconds to align with my power, because it'll make life easier, especially when you're calibrating. We're also going to want our total daily energy. So we can take that from here. We can copy that, paste it in. We do need to make a few changes here. We don't actually need that at all. Um, we just need the total daily energy and the ID is wants to be my power, which aligns with your home power ID. Now, of course, we don't need this sensor to be filled in twice. Uh, and then the time itself is so it knows when the end of the day is, so it can you know start again. We can save that and then we can install it. Uh, obviously, there are many ways to install it. You can either do it wirelessly, but you can't do it wirelessly yet. 
uh, plug it into this computer, download it and use ESP Home Flasher or whatever you want to do. Um, I'm going to do that now. Right, so now we've flashed that and we can see it's online. Uh, you can plug your D1 Mini into the uh, circuit board and plug your clamp sensor in. Uh, the USB on the D1 Mini wants to be facing or in the same side as the jack for your clamp sensor, by the way. And then we can click on logs and view our logs wirelessly. And we can see our measured current is coming back and our measured power and our daily power. And our measured current is basically zero. And that's because our clamp sensor isn't around anything. There is no power going anywhere. Um, so we can ignore it and it's basically zero. So that's good. So that is our first point of reference. Zero goes to zero. So now we need to calibrate our device. And calibrating it is more complicated than it could be. Um, what you're going to need for this is a device that you have a known power of. I would recommend you use something like a microwave or a kettle or a toaster because they're going to have standard power outputs. It'll be printed on the back. It's quite a large number, which is which is a good thing. Um, and you're also going to need a way of clamping a cable to that. So what I would suggest you do is get an old extension lead, um, potentially a long one, and you need, you're going to need to strip off the outer layer of insulation. Now, obviously, you're playing with electronics here, so it's dangerous, so be careful and don't do anything risky and, you know, only do it if you know what you're doing. But you need to expose the three cores inside your cable and you want to be able to clamp around the live core, the line conductor, which is the brown one in the UK. I don't know what it's like in America. Uh, probably red, maybe. Uh, but here, it's brown. So to do that, what I've done is I've created a new little extension lead using a, a box and a plug uh, and stripped off some cable in the middle so I can access the brown core. Um, if you are going to damage an extension lead to do this, then do it near the plug end. And then when you're done, you can just cut off the bit that you've damaged and move the plug and make it, you know, half a meter shorter or whatever. Uh, and by doing that, you're not going to be at risk later on. So yeah, don't leave it exposed once you've done your calibration, obviously, because it's dangerous. So I would also recommend not doing it directly to the appliance you want to test because then it's going to be there and exposed forever. And these appliances are in the kitchen, which is a more dangerous place, generally speaking anyway. So now we've played safe. And then we want to put our clamp sensor around the line conductor, the brown one of our extension lead and plug in a device. And then you can turn the appliance on. The best thing about a microwave is you can set it on for like 10 minutes and you can go back and forwards and kind of make sure you're getting the right numbers. Another thing to note is if you're using a microwave, then use, make sure you keep your D1 Mini as far away from the microwave as possible um, because otherwise the Wi-Fi will bug out and it'll be a nightmare to do anything with. So undo your cable and, you know, stick it on the floor next to the microwave or something out of the way. So. That is now on my microwave, and my microwave is on, uh, and we have got a new reading. We've got a state of 0 0.012, and that seems to be fairly solid. Uh, so we will keep that number. So we can now stop 0 0.012, remember that. In fact, I'm going to copy it. And then we will stop that, and we'll go into our edit panel. So, in our edit panel, we want to uncomment that. We've got zero to zero. That's what we agreed. Zero amps, and when there wasn't anything plugged in, it was giving us a value of zero. And now we've got a value of 0 0.01229, and that's when the microwave is on. My microwave is 1,150 watts. So, P equals IV, power is current times voltage. So, to get our current, we need to do power divided by voltage. So 1,150 divided by 230 is 5. So our 0.1229 is actually 5 amps. So this will just linearly calibrate it and shift the values to what we want them to be. We can save that. We can install that. 
and we can let it do its thing. Okay, so then we give it another test. Now, again, my microwave is off, and we are seeing a slightly higher number now, but not a worryingly high number, 0.04 amps. 0.05 amps is, isn't enough to, to worry about it. Um, well, you know, it's down to 0.01. In fact, it's going getting lower and lower each time. So once it's sorted itself out, you can see it's not a concerning number at all. Uh, so that's good. Zero is still pretty much zero. And then we turn the microwave back on. And we can see with these numbers that they're a little bit low. So what you might want to do there is remove the calibration, try it again uh, with, the mi with the microwave on and see what numbers you get. Equally, you might be happy with how it is at the moment. Um, so that is all well and good. We've got our current, we've got our power, and we've got our total daily power as well. So what can we do with that? Well, and then you can go into your integrations and see what's there. And if nothing's there, you just add a new one. And once you've got that, you can see the three entities. You've got your current, your power, and your total daily power. Great. So then we can go into our configuration under energy and add grid consumption. And our grid consumption is going to be our total daily power. And if you want to track costs, of course, you can do that as well. This energy situation is very good. Um, but for now, we'll just look at our total daily power. And then we can go into our energy dashboard and we can see our total daily power measured in kilowatt hours. That is, so there we go. That is whole home power in your home assistant. And of course, if you want to see a better view, then we can use a mini graph card and have a look at our measured power. And as soon as I plug that into the mains, we'll get a real value there. So there we go. That is whole home energy monitoring using just an ESP8266 and a clamp sensor and a little board to go between the two. Make sure you hit that subscribe button below and click the bell icon to find out more about My Smart Tech and how you can build yourself the ultimate smart home. Music